of Come on, pray with me, y'all. We thank you, Lord, for your presence being with us today. We thank you for the communication that we have had with you all day. And Father, if we came short of your glory today, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you forgive us for anything that we have done to sin against you, God. That is not our heart's intention. That's not what we desire for our lives, Father. We have made a confession that we will walk with you all the days of our lives, Father. And so we're asking, God, that if any moment we astray, we go to the left or to the right, that you arrest us right where we are, Father. That you get our permit, our, our attention, Lord God. You have permission to grab hold of our thoughts, grab hold of our emotions, grab hold of our footing, Father, so that we do not step out of alignment with you, Father. We honor you tonight. We thank you for this space that we have chosen intentionally, God, to just be in your presence and dive in your word. We want to be good stewards of your word, Father. And so we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to speak and breathe through us through this time together. Lord God, we look, look for the gems, Father, and the jewels that you want to deposit to us today, Father, that's going to help us move forward in our journey with you. We count it an honor. We count it a blessing that we are able to glean from you today and we say thank you and we ask Holy Spirit that you allowed us to be guided into all truth of the word let it not be our own perceptions but let it be the heart of our father in its purest form in Jesus name we pray amen all right y'all ready to die all right so we have been Oh, yeah, our young people, you are dismissed. Come on, let's clap it up for our youth leaders, too. They've been taking care of the babies. We appreciate y'all. Amen. We appreciate y'all. Um, so we have been talking um, extensively about the qualifications of a leader. Um, do anybody remember some of the qualifications that we have talked about thus far? I'm not going to keep asking y'all. <laughs> I'm going to just stop pointing y'all, okay? Alexis, what have we talked about so far on the qualifications of a leader? What stood out to you? Um, maybe even on the last Bible study, um, let me in on what you understand of the qualifications of a leader. <laughs> Terrible. I'm struggling to remember what I ate yesterday. Um. Ooh. That's why you're supposed to take notes. I wasn't here, but I watched it. Uh, oh. But I was, I, my hands were busy, but I was watching it. Okay. Last week. So if you are not here, go back, rewatch. I see you, Dejan. Dejan, like, I got it. I got you. Okay. Go back, rewatch, and take notes, y'all. And listen, this is not to put anybody on blast. I don't want you to feel like this is to put you on blast. But if we're not working towards it together, if we're not all moving together, right, then what are we doing this for, right? So I wanna make sure you actually get the seed that is planted and that is ready for you. So Alexis, take some real good notes today, okay? Okay? Okay. <laughs> Dejan. Um, four basic requirements for all leaders. Um, must be born again. Yeah! Must be a true believer of Jesus Christ according to 1 John um, 3. Um, born again by Holy Spirit after you receive salvation. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, sorry. I'll talk a little louder. I um, love it. Ev evidence of the powerful witness described in Acts 1 8 um, and for a call to be a leader. So, what is that experience according to Acts 1 and 8? What oh, are we talking about? The evidence is the power of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Y'all give it up for Deja. I love it. I love when we learn. Acts 1 and 8. Amen. So he said uh, there are three, I mean, I'm sorry, there's four basic requirements that we talked about for all leaders, right? So we understand that there's an expression of leadership that is uh, 
uh, evangelistic, right? And that's every disciple, right? Every disciple is a leader. Somebody say, I am a leader. If you are a disciple, 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 you are a leader. So according to the basic requirements um, that you as a disciple should have, you should be born again. You should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will be called and anointed to be a leader, right? So now the, the Holy Spirit will seal you to be able to do the work. And then you must be spiritually mature. Okay? Those are the four basics. I love it. Yep. So called and anointed. And then spiritually mature. Right? So that's for all disciples. Somebody say all disciples. All right, so we talked about the outer fruit of evangelism, right? That's one kind of spiritual fruit. And then we're talk- we talked about the inner spiritual fruit, which is the spiritual qualities. What was the spiritual qualities? Anybody remember? What was the scripture we talked about? Spiritual qualities, the inner qualities. Say it. Galatians 5 and 22. Good job. I'm proud of you. Galatians 5 and 22. Um, And so the inner fruit is something that you should be examining every single day you live. Right? If you ever want to know, are you getting closer to God? If you ever want to know, are you really uh, reflecting the heart of God? You will look at the qualities that the Spirit of God have and literally try and say, God, help me get more joy. Help me get more patience. Help me get more uh, humbleness, right, to be meek, right? Um, And so you will look in the mirror to see if you reflect those qualities, all right? Somebody tell me one of the qualities. Don't pull it up. Let's see if we can get them. Patience, love, faithfulness, kindness, gentleness, joy, peace, self-control. One more. Long su- Look at us. Go class. Y'all clap it up. Y'all ain't happy about yourself? <laughs> right. It's that long suffering. No, I don't want to be long suffering. Lord, get me out quick. Man, have anybody prayed a prayer and been like, Lord, mm -mm, I want out. I I don't want to do this no more. Right? And then you find yourself going through another situation with a whole extensive amount of time. Like, no, Lord, you ain't forget what I said. I don't want to do this. Like, right? Um, So long suffering is something. So we talked about the inward qualities. We talked about the outer expressions of the fruit. And now we are going to dive into Uh, the specifications that are for qualified, specific qualified leaders. So when we're talking about specific qualified leaders or specific qualifications, we're talking about those who have a desire to hold a position in the ministry, which will be God's church. We understand, right? So we're all called to go out into the highways and byways. But then there are specific qualifications for leaders that have the passion to work in God's church, right? Um, So we're going to dive into this because even if you uh, don't desire necessarily a role in the church, it's still good practice for you to understand these qualifications because you want to make sure that you show up as a full, whole, healthy leader, okay? Okay? And even if you are representing God in any form, these qualifications still apply. It just at a, a higher standard for those that say they represent the body and the kingdom of God in, in, his, in his bride, in his body. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and I like talking about this because this is the groundwork for all things. Yes. This is, so we're going to die. This, this is, this, we already dealt with all around leadership. Leadership is what? Who are the leaders? Disciples. Period. If you call yourself a disciple, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a leader, and your job is to do what? Huh? Spread the good news. Yes. Go out into the byway, highways and byways. So that's all leadership once you accept Christ. Okay, 
Um, so now we're going to go to specific qualifications. Do we got that? Uh, it says specific, I was about to say specific, specific qualifications. Right there. All right. Um, so in addition to spiritual fruit, the Bible identifies specific qualifications for leaders. These are found in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. I need somebody to grab 1 Timothy 3 and somebody else to grab Titus 1. The following qualifications are for those listed for pastors, bishops, elders, deacons. Although these qualifications are identified for specific offices, they are desirable for all leadership positions. So to answer Najee's question, um, we are going to talk about anybody that holds an office in, 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 in the, the church, but we understand that the office is not just under the fivefold right? There are offices to serve, right? If you are a servant in the house of God, you are still a leader and you are under this specific qualifications. Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Okay. So these are desirable for all positions of leadership. Okay. As we dive into that, somebody got first Timothy. Okay. Can you get Titus for me, Stephanie? Titus 1, yep, 1 Timothy, and we're going we gonna to slow walk this, so go ahead. Uh, here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Stop. We have dealt with this um, in the body of Christ and the abuse of desiring to be positioned in the kingdom of God for so long, for a long time. If I am honest with you, and I've talked about this before, but I want to dive a little bit deeper. If I'm honest with you, I was a part of the abuse. Me. I helped uh, build a negative uh, perception when it came down to receiving or operating in a position of God because of my experiences because of how I saw church, because of how I felt people did the church, because of what I saw in my own eyes. And so I always, uh, when it came down to a position in the kingdom of God, I always kind of was like, mm, nah, you don't want to do that. Eh. They fake, they phony. I'll say it in the quickness. We, and I would not have a, 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 a reason, technically, to deny the power and the position that an individual has in their role. But overall, because my perception was very negative and it was not aligned with the will of God and it came from a lot of bad experiences, I began to shoot down the church and the positions of the church, right? And so this scripture says right here, read that again, that one verse. First Timothy Chapter number three, verse one. Here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Those that desire to be in position in the kingdom of God, in the church of God, desires a good, honorable, noble, it meaning it's good for you to desire it. It's a beautiful thing. It's not a bad thing. And we have had language for so long that, that will discourage us from taking up our position in the kingdom of God, right? And we've heard it over time and time again. And so when you finally get called and you have this heart and be like, oh, the Lord called me to teach or the Lord called me to preach or the Lord called me to do this, you thinking twice because of what somebody else done said about that position. And you're like, mm, did God really call me to do that? Is that really where I'm supposed to be? And so we have to learn how to put God's qualifications and his positions in the kingdom of God back where it needs to be. It's a noble thing. It's a noble request. It's an honorable request for you to desire to want to work in God's bride. It's a beautiful thing. Somebody say it's a beautiful thing. Forget what you heard. In the eyes of your father, it's a noble thing. Okay. But just because it's noble, don't mean it doesn't come without responsibility, right? Just because it's a good thing, 
Don't mean you can be careless with it and just be like, yeah, and just jump in it, right? So now here are the instructions of actually walking that through. Go ahead. We're still in Titus, 1 Titus, chapter number 3. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle. All right, let's stop right there. What does above reproach mean? Can you get a mic? He, he, they are available, like have their life on display. Like anybody can, like no secrets. They're like, yeah, like an open book. I like it. I like it. Good stuff. I saw Red, your hand back there? No? That's the same thing? Anybody else? An open book. All right, let's go to the approach. Okay, Ish. But tell the truth, that stuck out on the yeah. word reproach. So I just Googled it, <clears throat> and it talks about uh, disapproval or disappointment. Mm -hmm. I just want to add that. I love it. Ne you want to go? Isn't it like, uh, like pretty much nobody can tell you anything or critique you? No one can tell. So above reproach, so... That will be the negative, that, that will mean you're under reproach, right? So, yes, but on the opposite side. You get what I'm saying? Um, let's go to the next slide. Above reproach means that you should have a good reputation. Your morals are in place. You are disciplined and not to be in violation of God's word. Means... To Alexis' point, you are an open book. Many of you that have been in my leadership one-on-ones, right, when we're pursuing a position in, 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 in the kingdom of God or in the ministry, what do I say? I have to what? I have to see you. If you can't live your life open, I'm sorry. I, can't, I don't even know what we're judging or what we're comparing or what fruit we have to even be able to say that you can stand in this space. And this is the place where a lot of us don't want to be. We have a noble desire to be and work in the kingdom of God, but then we want to hide when it comes to our lifestyle. Your heart want to be noble, but your behaviors aren't. And so now you're afraid that somebody will catch you on your imbalances. Right? And so the reason why this is important, and yes, it's for a specific you know, people, right, um, uh, uh, that want to move in the body, of God, uh, the body of Christ. But if you start working on this right now, even if you don't see yourself as a preacher or prophet or evangelist, you'll be well on your way when it's time for God to call you forward. Right? So this is still good. But um, so, so on the flip side of what Red said, you are not reluctant for people to, to, to look at you and say, hold up. You kind of not lining up. I saw you out here flipping, but you preaching. I saw you trying to lead. Ain't you the leader of the worship team? No, you over here twerking. Like, I saw your Facebook set, and you posting all of these, you know, all these songs, but you supposed to be leading me in worship. How are you leading me in worship and your language messed up? You feel what I'm saying? You have to be above reproach. And a lot of times, uh-oh, see, I get excited about this stuff. This is leadership. I get really excited. A lot of times, we, we, we get to the point, and we, we, we feel like, and have you ever heard the saying, I don't care what nobody say about me. I don't care what nobody, nah, nah, nah. Not when you, not, yeah, not, not when you live in above reproach. Because a good reputation means what everybody else is saying about you. What do people say about you? Right? What can they say? Do they say, man. Every time I see Annette, she consistent, man. She like, 
She ain't, I ain't never seen her change. She really bought that life. She really, now that doesn't mean that you don't slip up. That don't mean that you don't have mistakes. But, but on the consistent, you're striving to make sure that you are not in violation of God's word. And that's what show up. There are people that, makes mis- that make mistakes, but the grace of God will be on them because they're striving to be aligned with God. Right? Same for me. I fall short a lot. I don't fall short in the same stuff that I did years ago, but I still fall short. And it's the grace of God that keeps me because I'm constantly asking God to purify me, refine me. I don't ever want to show up in front of people and they can't see you. Ugh. I don't know what I'd do if somebody was like, man, you were just fleshly. I wish we had the boldness. I saw your hand, Haley. I really wish we had the boldness to be able to be like, that was flesh. That was not God. I really, I really do wish. Man, I really do. <laughs> she said, your sister walking boldness. I'm, no, I'm serious, though, and not in a way where it's, 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 it's negative and puffed up in pride, but to be aware, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. Uh-uh, no. Right? Haley, I saw your hand up. Um, I think for myself, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Um, I guess my question is, can we get a little bit more language or maybe even open the floor up to what it means to not be in violation with God's word, but feel like you're struggling with something, kind of like a thorn in your flesh type of thing. Like mm-hmm. you said, like I'm striving for perfection, but I'm not there yet, but I feel like God is calling me forward. Like, how do we kind of navigate that space where you feel like God is saying, is calling you to, to do more or to go into leadership, but you feel like maybe it's condemnation telling you like, oh, you still got that thing that, that, that hasn't been healed yet. This is or, good. or like, like you haven't seen God do that yet. So it's like, maybe I'm not ready, but maybe the God's will is saying you are ready. And if you get in position, then maybe that would be exactly what you need to be healed in that area. I hope this is making sense. Yeah, so in other words, and help me if, let yeah. me know if I'm, I'm yeah. on it, right? So in other words, what's the difference between being in violation, direct violation of God's law, and working out the kinks on your journey, right? Yes. Like pursuing righteousness, exactly. but still falling short. Exactly. What's the difference there? Come on, somebody talk. Let's go. Lexus. And then Prophetess Latifah. Y'all going to talk tonight. <laughs> um, I, I think, if I heard it correctly, this is good. It could be one way, and this is not the way, but one way is <clears throat> in your response. Um, and I could ju- I'm just going to use me for example. I know for myself, before I really got serious about my walk, I knew, as many of you guys can attest to, I'm very strong with my words. I'm, sh- I'm very straight from the hip. Like, I said what I said, I meant, I meant it, mm-hmm. and that was it. And so to, that, to now go into me working out um, um, to not be in violation in, of God's word or his character and things like that, now it's like when somebody bring that to me, because I, I leave it out, if I'm, if not, if I'm not above reproach, I, I show that self. Obviously, I show that part of me. I, I would say whatever I want to say or not say whatever. But you get what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And then someone could bring it to me and, like, like, see, like, either, like, I said something and they could come to me like, you hurt my feelings when you said that and things like that. My response would dictate if I'm li- living above a post. Like, I could be like, okay, but you knew me. That's how I am. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. straight from the hip. Or it could be, okay, I, I understand that about myself, so I'm a, I apologize. I didn't mean to, this is what I meant, if mm-hmm. I'm making sense. Mm-hmm. Like, so, um, it's still working out that part of me that was not so honorable mm-hmm. without um, 
without discrediting what I'm supposed to be. I get what you, I get where you're going. I'm not gonna touch it yet because I, I want I want other. That was good though. I I, I got you. Um, Prophet Latifah, I saw Jaquan and then I saw Dane. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna wait until y'all done. I'm one, gonna try. One thing I've learned in my um, walk with Christ and um, being called into leadership is that he don't just call you and then leave you to figure it out by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, he'll call you and then because he knows you and knows everything about you and, and already calculated all the mistakes that you're gonna make, um, he's gonna work with you to get to the point that you need to be to work, walk faithfully Come on. in your calling. Come on. It, he's not gonna just leave you out here to just try and fill your way out and, and, and he do not expect you to be perfect when he calls you. He didn't call a perfect person. He knew you from beginning to end. Um, but he's gonna take what he have and he's going to work out those things that's within you and, and uh, show you where um, you need to put some focus on here or you, know, you should change this. You will learn along the way as you grow. And then you'll start to see that a lot of your you stay connected to, to your source, to your power source, to the Father, you'll start to see that a lot of his ways is gonna start becoming your ways because now you guys are one. Yeah, I like it, I like it, I like it. Jaquan? And I'm, I'm gonna say this, moving forward, when you have, um, this is uh, just housekeeping, when you do have a response, Try as much as you can in Bible study period. Try as much as you can to relate scripture to what you're saying, okay? If it's helpful for the body, I want us to, we got to graduate, right? I want us to now try our best to add scripture to what we're saying so we can see the word acting out in that and what you're saying. Not today. You don't have to do, I mean, if you can, you good. But I just want to elevate us a little bit. Go ahead, Jake Wong. I actually just had a question on that. So picking up from what uh, Prophetess Latifah said. Yeah. So going back to Haley's question, then in that case, let's say you offer a position to like teach the kids. And I struggle with punching dealing walls. Dealing with kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah dealing <laughs> with the kids. So uh, do I go into the position and allow God to work me through that, or do I wait until I'm above reproach before I go into that? Because it could seem like it's condemnation, but also I see the flip side where it's like, ah, man, I'm not walking like how I should be. So, 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 ooh, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. Um, were you going to say something to that point? It was anybody going to say something to that? Dejan? To his point? Okay, go ahead. Because I want to, that's good. I don't want to lose that. Dane, don't lose what you got to say. Um, I was going to feel like uh, God won't put you in a position you're not ready for. So mm. if you're not ready for it, he's not going to put you in it. You know, to test how glad you, he can work you through it. He's going to make sure that you're ready for it, and then he's going to put you in it. Otherwise, you'll kind of embarrass yourself, and then you bring, like, he'll be called into question, and then you'll be called into question. So. I love it. So... One thing, this is, this is why it's very important in my discipleship class. Y'all yeah, know what we talk about, following the spirit of God. Um, because the spirit already knows what you are qualified in. You just don't know. Right? You're trying to work out the calling and the unction that God has put already on the inside of you. As Dejan said, God will never place you in front and give you a task that you have not been qualified for. Before I was a pastor, I was doing pastorly things. 
before I was where I, a prophet, before she was ordained as a, she was already operating in the role of the prophet. So the question really is, is are you listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Because if he has already been showing himself that there are, for that prime example, right? Let's say God wants you to teach, you know that's your overall goal, right? God is telling you, hey, I want you to teach children. You will know if you're ready for that, right? You can have a desire to do it, but you will know you're ready for it because you will have that patience. You will have that temperance. You will have that joy. You will have the fruit that shows you I'm ready to walk in this, right? Now, does that mean when you get in a position that you're not going to have moments of anger, that you're not going to have moments of uh, frustration? No. No. But the root of why you're there has already been qualified. Do you understand what I'm saying? Same it, it, with, with the occupation, right? Before you go to a job, they are looking at your, your history and your resume of what even qualifies you for the position. Once you get in the position, you might have some mix-ups, but it's still aligned with what you have already worked in. It's just maybe some new uh, 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 new skill sets that you may need to add to the position. Does that make sense? So God will never place you in a position that you're not ready for. The question becomes, have you been able to see and identify the leading of the Holy Spirit to get you to that place? And do you see the, the fruit that, that shows up? Now, if I just come to you and say, Jaquan, I want you to preach. And you know you ain't lining up, and it's, it's not connecting with what God has been speaking to you. There's no, there's no fruit there. You're looking in 1 Timothy, and you're like, bruh, I'm not following up. And I just tell you, yeah, you're violating at that point because you have not work, worked through or walked through, through with the Holy Spirit to actually produce the fruit. Anytime you're not producing the fruit and you're in a position, it's violation. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You should always have the fruit. You always have the fruit in the position. Now, again, that doesn't mean that God is not going to add more to you. But for the standard of why you're there, he's never going to put you on a job prematurely. Never. Not never. Right? Right? Before Peter knew who he was, yeah, there were some things that had to work out, but Peter's name didn't get changed until the fruit was there. Right? That's how God works. Does that make sense? Did everybody get that? Dane, what you had to say? I was going to say, it's sort of like a moral compass. Like when uh, Lex said the response... Um, we should be able, like, what does your heart feel after you do whatever it is that you know God is desiring that you change? So, like, um, if you know he has you working on cussing, hypothetically, and you cuss somebody out, when you really don't care, it's just like, boy, Come I just on. keep doing it, and I could just keep cussing, Come and I don't on. feel absolutely nothing. But it should get to a point as God is working on you, whenever you do that and the offense happen, you should feel it and inside of you even before the person is offended. Mm -hmm. I should be like, dang, I know I'm tripping. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what do you feel when you do the offense? Mm. And I'm noticing for me, I feel ashamed. Like, I feel like I've let my father down. Like, I feel like, hey, I've, dang, I've been working on this for the longest. I told daddy I wasn't going to do this anymore. Like, what do you feel? If you don't have no feeling when you do it, kind of ain't really changing at all. Right. I like it. Um, but what, what we need to do is we need to hone in on the word violation, right? The, the, the real distinction is in the word itself because some of y'all right now, y'all letting the enemy beat y'all up and y'all like, man, I'm just falling all the way short. I ain't getting it. I'm so far from God. The word violation in itself meaning the absence of care. You're paying no attention to, Right? When you're violating someone, you are very aware of what you should be doing. And you're making a conscious decision to go a different direction. You're ignoring 
the standard of God. That's not you pursuing and I'm just trying and God, oops. Lord, that's where grace come in. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about you actively knowing the, the law of the land is you need to stop at a red light. When you pass that red light, I don't care what the emergency is, you just violated the law. You said, I don't care, my situation is more important, I'm about to wing it, and then you get that, and now you're like, what? It was still yellow. No, you violated the law, right? And so um, you got to dive into deeper of what that violation means. You're ignoring God's voice. You're ignoring what he's telling you. When you start getting into a place where you're ignoring the conviction, as he said, when you feel that conviction like, oh, that should be you going running back to your father like, God, I feel you. I'm sorry. Like, help me out. Like, what am I missing? Show me what you want me to do. You should be throwing yourself in his face because you feel that conviction. When you start getting to the point where you're ignoring conviction, you, you, yeah, you, you in danger zone, right? So again, you got to be very careful because this is where the enemy likes to play when it comes down to us taking our position in leadership because we feel like because we're making mistakes or because we're still striving or we haven't met that mark yet that we're living in violation. You're not living in violation until you start ignoring. Do y'all get it? Right? So it's very, very, very important. One of the scriptures that come to mind that is one of my dailies is uh, for those who live according, Romans 8 and 5, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things and the desires of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit live and set their minds on things that the, that the spirit desires. Right? And that brings life and peace. Right? So if your mind is constantly, Lord, I, I really want to get this right. And, and for some reason, we really feel as though we kind of, honestly, it don't even be God. It be us counting ourselves out. Like if you go and you fail your fifth grade, how many, okay, driver's test. How many, I hope all of y'all got a license, right? Y'all passed your driver's test. How many times it took you to pass your driver's test? Three. Two. Mine's was two. It could have been three. Was it three? I don't know. How many? Okay. Or any test you took that was really difficult. How many times did you have to take it? A couple times. Did you give up and be like, man, forget this life. I don't even want. Forget driving. I don't want to drive no more. <laughs> no. You went back and you studied. You were a little hurt. You were a little discouraged because you thought your first round of study will qualify. You, you thought the first... And I skimmed through that book, and you thought you thought you were smarter than the book, right? It is common sense stuff. I'm gonna know what these signs mean. Then you look on there, and you don't know none of them signs, right? And so now you gotta take the test all over again. But in somewhere in the spirit, we we get excited in in, in the test in the natural, and we like, all right, man, dang, that was an L. So let me go back, and I'm gonna go do it again. We got some level of determination. But in the spirit, it's like, oh God, I'm failing up. I just can't never get it. No, like, get up. Take the test again and pass it. That's it. That's it. Relieve yourself from the extra pressure, right? Um, so, yeah, now let's keep going. Did that answer? Where Haley go? She gone. Did that answer her question? Somebody asked her, did that answer her question? Okay. I just want to make sure she got her, her question. Did that answer your question? Okay. So keep going. Um, oh, no. this is what a point I want to make. Where is, okay, read it, read it, read it. Not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. Wait, he go back up for me. Go back to, is an honor roll thing. Start from one. Oh, here's a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Keep going. Now the over overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, 
self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle. Okay. Not One second. So this is what I need you to know. Back in the, the Bible times, right, the bishop and overseer, as you know it, was not the same thing. Okay? When you see a bishop now, almost everybody bishops. Okay? That's not the same thing that, that they're talking about here. Right? Um, in some translations, you will see a deacon. Some of them, you will see an elder. Some of them, you will see a bishop. Um, the best way to depict what is being said is an overseer. Anybody that is overseeing any area under the body of Christ. Okay? Right? So that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about the deacons that keep the keys right, that you see in all these organizations, that's not what we're talking about. Anybody that desire a position in the kingdom of God, in the bride of Christ, these are the ones that saying it's a notable thing, but this is where you need to be absent from. So I don't care if you're the hospitality leader, you're an overseer. I don't care if you're overseeing the outreach or the praise and worship. If you hold an office in the body of Christ, this is for you. So it's very important that you know that because sometimes we be like, well, I don't want to be a bishop, and you miss the whole point of, of the conversation. Okay? Yes. You got a mic? Um, I had went to another church out in New Jersey uh, with my Haitian family, and they were actually doing an ordination service for the deacons. And so they was getting ordained as a deacon. To me, it was like unorthodox. I'm like, I've never seen a deacon ordained. But that makes so much sense in what you just said. Yeah, it's, it's, it's biblical. Um, and there are some organizations that does it. We don't. I don't. We don't ordain anything other than a five-fold ministry. That doesn't mean you can't work in the office of it. But ordination for us specifically in our ministry is under the fivefold ministry because we are boot camp. This is the ground in the house that God has created for that to help train others in those offices. Um, but it doesn't mean that being a deacon is bad. Or you know, I've been under organizations that they they ordain deacons like flies, boy. Like they got mad deacons. You know what I mean? Like I'm like everybody a deacon in here. You know, but what that literally, the role is just overseeing the functionality of the ministry. So usually, typically, you will see a deacon, like I said, with the keys. They open up, they're responsible for those that come in, they shut the doors, they make sure, you know, that everything around the church is more like security, if you will. Um, and they make sure the finances are good. They don't have a necessary finance team. They have deacons that take care of the finances. Um, so it depends on your house, but that don't matter. In this context, it's anybody that oversees anything. If you are over the women, if you are over the men, if you are, you are considered an overseer of something. And this applies to you. Does that make sense? All right, so next slide. So we said above reproach. Um, I'm sorry, did we get Titus? Stephanie was supposed to get Titus, right? She gone. Okay, we'll come back to Titus. Um, husband of one wife. <laughs> if married, you should only have one mate. And I know some of us like, this is typical. Yeah, we already know. But in some churches and organizations, they believe that you can have more than one wife. Or they don't believe it and still have more than one wife. Right? Um, and so what this means, if you're caught in a situation where you're not being uh, 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 unified with your spouse and your spouse only, you're in violation. If you have any type of intimate relationships outside of your marriage, you're in violation. And so, again, you have to walk closely with each other, or we have to walk closely with each other, that if that is an area that's showing up some areas of weakness, we got to be able to have conversations around it. And this is why a lot of times, again, people back up and be like, nah, I don't want no parts. Because for men, can I keep it real? Men would be like, this is my house. Let me deal with my own house. Let me figure it out. For women, sometimes y'all too shame. You don't want to talk about what's really going on. 
You don't want to talk about. And then the flip side of that, because all men don't cheat. Sometimes it's the women being a little too sociable, right? But again, this is tied with reputation. Even the very offense, if somebody come and proceed, perceives that you are flirting or, or, or um, sending mixed signals in your leadership, that has to be discussed. You can't just be like, oh, no, I wasn't because I, I don't know what they, no, 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 no. It don't matter. Because you are in leadership, we have to make sure that, okay, how do we kill this thing? How do we make sure that we build a wall of fire that this don't ever happen again? Even if that wasn't your intent. And see, as a leader, a lot of times we are wearing our feelings on our shoulders and we can't have healthy conversations even if you didn't mean to do it. Can you say sorry for the mere offense or the perception? Come on. But the moment that somebody come and say, oh, such and such, he a leader, or such and such, she a leader, but I saw her flirting with, you like, want to build up a defense? No, I wasn't. Why can't you humble yourself and say, hold on, Pastor Jay, I think we need to have a meeting. Let's bring all parties to the table, because that's not what it is. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get my wife. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get my husband, and I think we all need to come in and let's talk about it. Because what ends up happening is if we don't deal with that, that spreads. And how can one, even with the perception, how can one sit in the audience and receive you as a leader? And and they see you, you get where I'm, yeah, I get where I'm going? So this is very important. And this what causes uh, uh, the body of Christ not to be in its most healthiest form. Because we don't know how to deal with stuff like this. This, if, 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 if you see me flirt, I don't care if I gave you a twinkle in my eye, like, I'm so serious. If you felt the, if anything, you should be able to come and say, hey, Pastor Jay, I don't really know what that was. Now, <laughs> it's either going to be me or you. But at least having a conversation to say, hold on, oh, wait. If, if that's what you thought, no, I'm not, I apologize. So now the Holy Spirit can either deal on my end or he going to deal on your end. And even if it's on your end, I'm not going to be like, baby, that was you. You lustful. <laughs> what I'm going to do is let's pray into it. Let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because if you see that and somebody walk in the door and they're struggling with that, they're going to automatically think that is something that is not. Many of times, help me, Holy Spirit. Many of times, it's not our intentions that get us in trouble. It's the behavior of our past. And we haven't learned how to adapt to the holiness of God. And sometimes our behavior just show up in a different way. It doesn't mean that you're intentionally trying to be lustful or, or promiscuous or, or, or whatever. It just means that you just haven't been learned or taught in that situation yet that's just like somebody coming off the street if you always wearing tight clothes you won't come to church with tight clothes on until somebody sit down walk you through it and say hey and then the holy spirit start changing the 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 messenger send a message and then the holy spirit say yeah you can take that in go ahead and change that come on y'all This is the stuff that we need to be talking about in our churches. How do you handle conflict? How do you handle when somebody say, you always mad? She just mad. I don't know. I don't don't pump with them because it's always a negative vibe. Instead of taking an offense and be like, I ain't negative. She negative. I ain't mad. He mad. He don't talk to me. Why not just be like, oh, no, wait, that ain't. I just be in my thoughts sometimes. Hey, let's come. The Bible says when you have an all against your brother, what you do? Come on. You go to him. Right? And as a leader, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you with my chest. If somebody come to you and they are a babe in Christ and they are offended by something that you did, the first response should not be trying to defend yourself. Guess who's going to have make you have a seat? To have a seat. Sit down. Because you should learn, you should know how to de-escalate that. 
I'm, I'm trusting you as, can I talk natural? I'm trusting you as my leader, my co-laborer in the kingdom of God that when a babe come, if their eyes are not seeing the right thing, you help them see. Not invest in the problem. So again, to whom much is given? Yes, right? And so uh, a husband of one wife, yes, Haley. No, I was about to go, so I had to make sure. I ain't doing you like that. See? No, that wasn't even. See, now we got to have a conversation, right? <laughs> that was not the way that that happened, Haley. I really wanna know, want you to know from the bottom of my heart, that was not my intention. I was actually going to go somewhere else. And so when I saw your hand, I just wanted to acknowledge your presence. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, that probably wasn't my own heart. Because people say I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But I got to be clear. So my question is, as a leader, we should be able to deal with conflict or yes. de-escalate, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Within our process of becoming a leader, because some people learn conflict resolution in other places, they already come with that. Mm -hmm. So like, is conflict resolution something that we learn about through our one-on-ones through leadership through discipleship like, yes okay so conflict resolution the the foundation of it that's why we do discipleship class that's why i say we learn together once you implement the holy spirit that's already conflict resolution it's just depending on if you really hearing and following the instructions holy spirit is the resolution right but practically Right. Once we get from discipleship class and we go into leadership class, um, we start dealing with your gifting. And what does that look like in your area of influence? Right. And so we deal a little bit more practically on that. You know what I mean? And, and, and trying to get your best practices. How do you deal with certain situations? How if someone was to come to you, what does that actually look like? Um, so we dive into all of those good things. Um, in our one-on-ones, but I don't think that that should stop you from really asking those questions right now. Does that make sense? Because you may be right where you are and somebody may walk in the door. How, how are you going to de-escalate this? Or what if it's your, your peers? We say we do what? Live together. So what if it's somebody else outside and they tripping, tripping? You going to just watch and be like, yo, this is crazy. Or are you going to implement and jump in there and let the Holy Spirit lead you? Amen? Dejan. Say it again. It depends. Ooh, wait, we coming back to that. Don't shout stuff out and then we coming back. Dejan, you good? You sure? What do you mean it depends what it, who it is? You can put yourself out there, bro. I, I'm being honest. You said we got to be honest. Yeah, go. Because if I felt like a lot of days I stand on post for you guys. I know I know the church sees it. I stand on post for you guys and make sure that, that I say the first family is okay and everybody mm -hmm. you guys get into the car or whatnot. And I think I wonder if in a situation, because the world is crazy, what if somebody was outside tripping and then hypothetically like a, you guys go to de-escalate or something and the person goes to grab you or you grab Red. Oh, oh man, we got a Peter. My, I lost my religion. He's chopping off people's ears. Lie. Yeah, I got to make Lord. sure y'all straight. I so gotta, you I hear him, Bishop. We going to have to heal the yeah. ears back up. I got to make sure. <laughs> Tell Dane to come on and right. sit down. I'm definitely trying to de-escalate verbally. And if, if it's not that way, because everybody doesn't see it. <laughs> Red, like, I'm going to let him do what he need to do first. And then, <laughs> then we'll talk later. <laughs> I believe, I, I believe it is, it is our goal to make sure that we walk like Christ. Peter is very influential, but he's not the goal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, and God knows how we're all fastened. He knows our makeup, right? And when you're trying, when you're really trying to pursue God and not violate his word, you might have a mess up, but he will be able to come behind you and heal that because he know that your intentions are really to please him. It's when you're not that there's a problem. Again, so it goes back to the ignoring, 
right? Um, I don't believe Peter intentionally just ignored Christ and just was like, man, Christ, forget you. I'm about to go in here, take matters in my own. It came more out of love and protection. That's why Jesus, uh, bro, no, come here, right? Because if Jesus, think about it, if Jesus did not heal the ear of the soldier, they would have had something really to crucify Jesus for. Get it? At this point, Jesus is blameless. They have nothing on him. The reason why Christ had to heal him is because, Peter, you, no. You, 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 you giving him a story. Dang, no. <laughs> you giving him a reason to crucify us. We need to, they, we want them to crucify us, right? Christ, you have to crucify me, but without reason. So your problem or your uh, a decision in that moment is, am I really helping God for him to be fully glorified or am I giving them a reason and stripping him from his value because I'm walking in disobedience, right? And so I get it, but just because you get it don't make it right. You feel me? Um, and the goal is always Jesus. But if you're pursuing that and that's where your heart is, God will cover and give you grace. Yeah, you're going to be, he going to be, he going to be messing. Oh, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He been laid out on us. Yes. Are y'all getting this? Is this good? Yeah, good, good, good. this is good. Um, so what if you, um, firstly, it is based on your heart and your intentions. So your intentions was never to um, harm anyone or any of that. And then you go to that person and try to make it right, but they are less reluctant to even hear you or they feel so offended that they don't necessarily want to accept um, what you're saying or how you're trying to address the situation. Is it fair to just walk away? <laughs> like, I, I, I really want to know. I like it. Um, I saw my husband was like, let me get that. Let me get that. All right, we coming to you, Bishop. Let's answer this question. That's a good question, Phoebe. And then anybody else that want to add and tag along? Dejan, you sure this time? Okay. Um, I feel like the easy answer, of course, would be yes, because you did Yes, what? Um, that would it be, I'm sorry, repeat the, the last part of your question. Would it be okay? I feel like it, it is okay because you did your part. But if you didn't try, then that's where you're wrong. Right. And you just didn't care. But a lot of times, this is me personally, I'll feel like when you're doing stuff like that, it's not necessarily for that individual, just for that individual. I mean, definitely you want to care about them. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes it's not just for them. And when you do that part, it could come back to you in a totally different way, whether from a different individual or other aspects of life. I love it. Clap it up. I'm all for it. Anybody else? Dejan, did you want to have something to say? Um, I was going to ask something. So um, if you ask a question, like, not ask a question, but um, if something is pure, does that mean that it's righteous? If something? If you say something pure, does that mean that it's righteous? If you say something pure? Like, even if you meant in a pure way, does that mean that it's righteous? No. You can mean it. I can really say, I don't like you. I'm pure. Does it mean it's right? No. It may be lawful, but not expedient. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not what you, I can say, I can say a lot of, I meant what I said, but what you said wasn't right, right? And, and the righteousness of it is not predicated on your logic. The righteous of it, if it's go with the word of God, if it violates the word, you're wrong. It doesn't matter how, when, what, where, right? Um, but I like what Red and Phoebe, I, you got your answer? I agree with that. Um, the Bible says, listen, if they don't receive you, wipe the dust off your feet. You did your part, right? Um, I saw Ish, and then I want to go to a scripture. I'm going to challenge you. Go ahead. Did you really do your part? And what I mean by this, Pastor Jay, is 
So there's been, I'll give you an example to bring it, make it more clear. <clears throat> there's been times, you know, going, it's funny that we talk about husband and wife, that I thought I apologized to Haley, but the way I went about it, my tone was all the way off. Mm -hmm. So the method I used, even the words that I said could have been right, going mm -hmm. back to, to mm -hmm. the pure and righteous, mm -hmm. it wasn't received. Mm -hmm. And do I check me? At the end of the day, do I check how I actually went about it? Mm -hmm. So I, I would challenge that in the sense of, are you open to God's way of showing you wisdom for that person? Because how I, how I go about it now, after year five, year six, is not how I went about it in the first couple of years, but I had to sure. learn that, yeah. right? So um, a couple of scriptures. <laughs> I feel you, bro. So I want one to say, you know, the weariness can happen in that situation, I was, from what I experienced, mm -hmm. of like, wow, I feel like I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm doing all these different things and I can get weary. So Galatians 6 and 9 come to mind, let us not get weary in well-doing. But also the reason why I'm saying this is because we can think we're doing it for a righteous reason or mm -hmm. whatever, you need to hear it is, but boom, boom, I'm just being real with you. But what if that was not received because of the way you went about it? Right. So I think that it's not so much saying you can't, it's not so much saying you got to make it right and do all. No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying I, we do have to check our flesh. Absolutely. So I think that that's something that I would just add to that is um, making sure that you're not. We're not prideful, thinking that we did it the right way. Well, now we're, we're causing more disconnect with the relationship than connection. And honestly, I just feel like it's black or white. Either you, either you, are in violation or not violation. Right? Like, Holy Spirit not gonna lead you to pride. Holy Spirit not going to lead you. You can feel rejected, and I don't know about you, but when I apologize or I give my heart in a thing, that thing hurt when it's rejected. It, it hurt. like, and, and I literally have to allow the Holy Spirit to soothe me in that thing. Because when you really, when you sincerely apologetic about something, the rejection hurts you more than it does make you want to buff up. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, oh, no, I really wanted you to receive that. And so um, the Holy Spirit is never going to lead you to apologize about something and, 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 it, and you're puffed up and it's, you know what I mean? Like he, he can't, either you're following him or you're not following him. So I agree with what you're saying. So if you did your job and, and, you, and, and you're following the leading of the Holy Spirit and they still reject, that's not your job. That's not your problem. You're not looking for a response. You're being obedient to what God's word told you to do. Sometimes we go give an apology because we're looking for a response. You may have done everything you possibly can to get to Haley. Haley's heart is, 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 is hardened, right? And you can discredit the obedience that you had in God because she didn't receive it because you're looking for a response. That ain't your job. That's God's job, right? Um, now, the benefit will be beautiful when we both have Holy Spirit in us and we're walking in unity and you feel my, my apology and the Holy Spirit allows you to receive it. That's that, Me and Red, we getting there, y'all. We like, we be flopping. We're like, mm, mm, my turn. <laughs> we get excited when we, when we can forgive and we can see that reception and, and woo, we winning. You know what I mean? But, again, it goes back to you either did your work or you didn't. There ain't no in-between. You, you either following God for real or you or you not. And it's not based on the rejection. It's based on your obedience. Does that make sense? Uh, I saw two hands, Red and, and Haley and then Red. Um, there was a scripture that came in my mind. When don't read mine, please. Huh? Go ahead. No, I'm just. Oh, it probably is. I don't know. Um, when Dejan asked if something is pure, is it righteous? Um, the first scripture that came to, I was like, I'm confused because there's a scripture that I always kind of like use as a filter when I make decisions. Um, and that's Philippians 4 verse 8. Yeah, I love it. Um, but I also think that it ties into this discussion about apologizing sincerely. Um, so Philippians 4, I'm actually going to start at... Um, Verse four, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. always. I will say it again, rejoice. Yeah. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Mm -hmm. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Meaning like, when I think about that, I think about like, don't be anxious that you did the thing wrong. 
But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will yeah. guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, yeah. noble, right, pure, lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So that's what I thought about. And I feel like I believe that it those scriptures kind of tie all this together because the the answer that we're kind of looking for is through already being in communion with God, yeah. Dejan, and even Phoebe, as you're talking about being apologetic, is that if we're already in direct communication with him, he's already kind of downloading what is pure. He's purifying our definition of pure yeah. and righteous and what it means to apologize so, so good i think that that's just like a practical thing is like stay in constant prayer and mm. at the same time be thankful unto god that he even presented the thing that he even presented the conflict because the conflict is actually what you need to either do something in yourself or kind of get you to that next level because yeah. it's a it's a it's a suffering that we yeah. all have to endure so that we can experience our greater. I love it. That was good. We're going to wrap it up right there. That was good. That was that was really good. I, oh, Bishop, what you got to say? I'm sorry. I was about to close the mic. I was going to go somewhere, too, but I, I felt the Lord telling me to just wait. Um, I just wanted to say also um, a lot of times kind of with what Ish said, um, with how you responded or how you, you're apologizing, but you don't really mean it. Um, I think a lot of times we are, we're really like trying to uh, fix the outcome, basically make the outcome what you want it to be. Um, but you have to really you know. You could have talked to me about that in the car, buddy. <laughs> you have to really know what you, you're apologizing for and then know it's the right thing to do and just move on. And a lot of times, too, you, you're, you're trying to figure out what the other person is, how they're going to respond to you, and their response that you're looking for may not happen right away, but yeah. you might also be helping them. They might go away and think about it. That's they might so need good. That, but they're not getting that from others, and you may be the person that can help them to come back to you and say, you know what? I thought about what you said, and it can turn you know, to a different situation. That's so good. You ain't had to put me out there, though. I'm just saying. No, it's a real thing. Sometimes you're apologizing because you just want to get, you want to quickly get to the resolve. And, and you want the resolve to be what you intended, and God may be like, I don't even want that for you, right? Um, and, and, and that's so me. That is, I have to check myself numerous of times. And then I have to be patient that it might be something that God want to deposit that the next person need to meditate on or to think about. It's not just a quick fix, you know what I mean? And sometimes that can ruin, you know, our intent of the apology. Because you just wanted to hurry up. You should know. You, and that you should know thing, people don't know. I don't care if you feel like y'all been together or you, this person knew you. Sin, your mama should know. Your daddy should. Nobody should know anything but the Holy Spirit. Period. You know? So just give them the benefit of the doubt. Bring it up. Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Um, I want everybody to go home and study Matthew 18 and 15. Matthew 18 and 15. And then I want you um, to dive into uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 3 in its entirety. Okay? Um, Matthew 18 and 15. And then uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 3, what we were just talking about. So here's the scenario for Matthew 18 and 15, and then we're going to have our young people come. All right? You're the pastor. <laughs> and there is someone continually bringing conflict and discord in the body of Christ. According to Matthew 18 and 15, how do you handle that situation? I want a real life situation. You're the pastor. They're bringing discord to the body of Christ. <laughs> um, conflict, 
corrupting the culture of the ministry. I mean, all things offense. Okay? A lot of rumors going on, having issues with keeping their eyes on their own wives. Whatever the extreme will be, they're doing it. How would you handle that situation according to Matthew 18 and 15? Everybody got it? I want real, live, practical steps that you will take. And the reason why I'm doing this is because sometimes when things happen in the body, it's hard for you as a member to be able to understand why it has to go a certain way. But this is going to help you open your eyes to be able to see how God handles conflict in the body at large. So you will be able to properly see if there is discord, what should be happening, right? You can hold me accountable. You can hold your peers accountable. You can hold your leader. You know what to look for in the spirit. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to uh, equip your eyes to see. I pray we never have this situation. But if we do, we should know how to handle it or how it should potentially be handled. Amen? All right? So that's the homework. I want everybody to attempt to do it. You never know who I'm going to call on, so just be ready. All right? Um, we are getting ready for our young people to come, and they're going to teach us what they learned today. Um, before we do that, we're going to have offering. Amen. Are y'all prepared to give offering today? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I want you to, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do offering now. Um, you can give by a few ways. You can give by way of cash app, dollar sign, Waging War Ministries, number one. Uh, you can find us on Tithely. Amen. Um, or we have the card machine. We have Nige here if you want to give by way of cash. Amen. I am asking that everybody continue to be diligent and consistent with your giving, your tithe and offering, especially, guys, um, especially your tithes and offering. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, um, and thank you for helping us keep what we have in order. So I really thank God for your contribution from the bottom of my heart. Father, we thank you for giving us a mind to give. We ask, Father that you continue to open up the windows of heaven, continue to pour out your blessings upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for, Lord God, just making sure that we are, uh, we are not lacking anything, that everything that we need, it comes from you, Father. And as we sow our seed today, we are believing, Father, that you are showing us the qualifications of being a true leader, not what we saw, not what people told us, but that we can be great examples in your kingdom. And we thank you and we honor you for the word that was ministered to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. You leaders I do want to say this I want now our young people amen to be a part of offering amen so when they have their lessons I don't care if it's 25 cents a dollar make sure you communicate with the parents y'all hear me for those of you that are here they have to be stewards of giving you have to know what that looks like and that will go directly towards you guys's youth account okay but they have to learn how to give Amen. They have to be stewards um, of, of their finances. And some of them got a lot of money. <laughs> some of them went to Wendy's about three times this week. Okay? So let's make sure we um, teach them on stewardship in, in their giving. We're coming. Um, who we got first? Teens. Come on. Y'all clap it up for our teens as they get ready to come. Hi guys. Hey. So today we're talking about um, correction, and <laughs> and um, being humble and humility and stuff like that. So basically, what I got out of it is like, if you don't have correction, or if you don't like correction, then there's no growth, basically. Because if you don't like correction, 
and like let's say okay I'm a like a worship leader right and Imani comes up to me and tells me something that I did wrong that she's seen in her eyes that I probably didn't see and I would say oh well you don't tell me what to do or like that's wrong yeah and and so that could lead up to me not like growing into the person I am today so yeah, just take correction. Like, you got to have correction. Without correction, there's no growth. So, I basically had the same stuff Joachim has, but basically, we talked about how you have to humble yourself for God's work, and we talked about how you have to be willing to take corrections from authorities to get to your overall goal, which is the kingdom of God. Going based off what Azaria and Joaquin said is, in order to be re obedient, you have to stop being rebellious. Um, so going based off my personal life, um, me, I am very rebellious, but I do have to and want to make a change for myself. So in order for anyone to make a change, you have to take accountability for yourself and take an action for yourself. I learned that if you take correction, you can help yourself and other people. Um, so what I got from this is uh, we had three words that um, went into our lesson, and three of them was availability, willingness, and being submitted. I said it goes along with working for the Lord. Um, they don't see what, if you have this, they don't see what you what you can do, but they see your availability, willingness, and your submission. Your walk is not for you, but it's for you to spread the gospel. And that also co goes with being vulnerable. You have to put aside the shame and the guilt so that you can, so that God can still get the glory. Our teens. Good job, y'all. They always line up. I want to go. I'm going to go to their Bible study one day. Um, now we're going to have our young people. Come on, young people. Our young adults. Ooh, that'd be good, too. Up, cop it up. Um, so we started the fourth lesson, um, Psalms 4. Um, we did not finish the lesson yet, but I'm going to see if they were paying attention. So I am going to read some of the scripture, and I'm going to see if they could tell me what the scripture means. So you guys have to listen. We already went over this. So now I'm about to put you to the test to see if y'all was listening or not. Okay. So Psalms 4. And verse 4 says, don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Can you tell me what you think that means? Anybody? Okay. I think that means don't let anger get in the way of your holiness. Talk to, pray, to, pray and talk to God about it overnight and and, and let him calm yourself and let him calm you down. That's what I think it means. That's good, 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 good. Good job, good job, good job. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. It says Psalms 4 and 8. It says, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Can anybody tell me what that means? You want to? I can read it again. I think Jada want to do it. Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to. You know. All right. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Okay, Jada? It says, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. He will lie down and sleep because he knows that um, God will keep him safe while he's sleeping and guard with his angels and don't let um 
the devil touch them. Good job. <laughs> All right. Um, one more. Kind of a tricky one. Um, Psalms 4, verse 3. How you know you know it? Listen. Listen first, y'all. Okay. Verse 3. You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. What do you think that means? What I think that means is. Yes, I can read it again. You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. That what I think that means the um Lord took all the holy people in church, all the Christians with him, and the he gave all the devil people to the devil. <laughs> so basically it's saying the Christians, the ones who follow cars, are set apart. And yeah, we're still going over the scripture, but I think they did good. I think they did good. <laughs> all right, good job. Let's go, let's go. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for them. They did so good. I'm so excited for them. Um, we are going to go over just a few announcements, and then we're going to let you guys go. Um, it was 90 degrees. Don't y'all feel good in here? The, the bishop made sure that we got a circulation going on, y'all. So no announcements? No? Okay, so we're going to go. We don't have any announcements. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Lord, we thank you that you have spoken your word to us, and not just to us, but to our children. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that you are teaching us as a whole of what it means to be good representatives of your kingdom. And so, Father, as we continue to dive in, just to have some good examples of what it means to be pure at heart and righteous and perfect in your sight, Father, we're asking, Lord God, that you continue to uh, navigate us. Show us the things that we need to get rid of. Um, help us not to try to defend ourselves and help us uh, not to feel um, that we're walking so far away from you and we can't make any mistakes. But help us just own the teachings that you are giving to us. If we can sum it all up tonight, you're teaching us new things, Father. And we want to be available to be able to learn what you are teaching us so that we can be good stewards. As we leave this place, God, never from your presence, God, we're asking that you just cover us, that you protect each vehicle, every home, Father. We pray what the youth have spoken today, that when we lie down tonight, that our soul and our mind will be at sweet peace. And I thank you, Lord God, that you will answer the questions on every heart that is here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I love you guys. I